Tonight, uh, we will be covering uh, the following items regarding the uh, new modernization of William Wirt Middle School. Uh, we will first start off with our team introductions. Then we will proceed with our uh, project scope. Uh, we will go through the construction overview, and then we will end tonight's segment with uh, questioning uh, and answering segment as well. My name is Will Smith. I am the project management supervisor for the Department of Capital Program. Uh, we are pleased to host you guys tonight to give you uh, an update on this wonderful project uh, that we're delivering in your neighborhood uh, and, and within your community. Um, I have been with the school system roughly 10 years at this point, uh, and we are excited to be able to deliver this project for you guys. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to our project manager, who is uh, managing the day-to-day -day operations and management of this project, uh, Mr. Henry, Henry Lewis. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as Will said, my name is Henry Lewis. I'm the project manager on the project for Prince George's County Public Schools. I handle the day-to-day management of, of the project and uh so far i've been enjoying seeing this project go up and with that i'll turn it over to the uh, project architect seth my name is seth once thank you henry uh, i'm an architect with crabtree Rural, and uh and i guess i'll, I'll round out the introductions here keller uh, will be joining the presentation after my portion and uh i believe it's justin short will be uh delivering that part on the construction updates Good evening. Go ahead. Good evening. I'm Justin Short. I'm the project executive for Keller, uh, overseeing the William Work Project, and uh, we look forward to another successful project with Prince George's County Public Schools. Okay, I think we can go to the next slide. As far as the project scope, this project essentially is the demolition of the existing 106,000 square foot facility that was built back in 1964, and it has a state rated capacity of 85, or I'm sorry, 850. It's gonna be replaced with a new facility, brand new construction at about 171,000 square feet, and the new state rated capacity for this facility is gonna be 1,200 students. The site improvements are gonna include athletic fields, lighted walking trails, a new entry off of Norman Avenue, separate drop-off areas for buses and students, uh, buses and parents. It'll have outdoor educational opportunities, including access to Briar Mill Run, and will have accessible sidewalks accessing the, the site. The building itself is gonna be a three-story, it'll have a three-story educational wing. It'll have grade level instruction um, on each one of those stories. The grade levels are going to be organized in neighborhoods, and I'll go through the slides then and explain what that means. And each neighborhood will have its own collaborative learning area. The first floor will have mostly community use spaces, uh, for example, the cafeteria, the gymnasium, um, some of those performing arts spaces. And then there's going to be a large light-filled cafeteria with a stage, a natural lit uh, gymnasium, a fitness lab with classrooms adjacent to a dance studio, there will be band and chorus classrooms adjacent to the dance studio, uh, adjacent to the uh, performing arts area. There's going to be a second floor media center with instructional space, access to an outdoor uh, patio. And then on the third floor, there will be a STEAM and arts initiative uh, suite up there that will also have access to an outdoor terrace. Um, and then there will be building wide security features with modern security incorporated. What you're seeing here is the, uh, the lobby of the school. This is the main lobby. It connects all three stories of the building. Uh, in the distance there, off to the left, you can see that's where the cafeteria and the stage with the performance platform is. And uh, this is one of those collaborative learning areas off the lobby that allow for interaction with students. Next slide, please. So what you're seeing here in the upper left-hand corner, that is the cafeteria and uh, stage space. So you're seeing it set up with cafeteria tables, but could easily be reconfigured for a performance. And uh, directly adjacent to that on the right, that would be a typical classroom view. And then as I spoke about neighborhoods earlier, there's a corridor in the, uh, I'm sorry, please go back to the last slide there. There's a corridor that connects each floor of the classroom wings and off that corridor are the neighborhoods. And that classroom is off one of these, uh, what you're seeing in the lower left-hand corner, 
is a small group instruction space, that collaborative learning area directly off the classroom. So you have views into the classrooms there. Next slide, please. And this is the second floor media center. This is a, a rendering of it. So the second floor media center is uh, doubling up as lounge space, media center space, and has direct connection through that stair you're seeing on the left up to the steam suite on the third floor. Uh, each one of these spaces have a lot of natural light and good views out to the Briar Mill Run and uh, to the entry mm -hmm. plaza. Uh, I'll talk about the project phases. Phase one consists of the relocation of the existing modular classrooms, installation of sediment and erosion controls, installation of new utilities to the new school building, and some site work. Then we move into the phase two, which is, uh, includes the construction of the new school building and is constructed in conjunction with the progression of phase one site work. Upon completion of the new school and phase one site work adjacent to the new building, the owner can utilize the new facility and vacate the existing school building. We we'll then move into phase three, which consists of utility disconnects and demolition of the existing school building. Phase four will be wrapping up, which includes the completion of all site work, including completion of the installation of the stormwater system, bioretention structures, a new ball field, amplifier seating, new bus loop, newly paved surface play courts, fencing, and a new parking lot with access to Tuckerman Street. Uh, construction overview. Um, since the last meeting, what has happened is uh, Keller has completed the slab, all slab on grade for the project. Uh, steel erection in area B has been completed. Uh, second and third floors of area B slab has been poured. Uh, masonry bearing walls in, in area A, which includes the gym and dining area, um, has been completed. Site utility work, including water line, sanitary, and storm piping has begun, and interior mason area walls, uh, which includes the corridors and some classrooms in area B has been, has been worked on. Um, what has currently happened is steel erection continues in area C, which is your main classroom area. Uh, interior mason activities continue throughout the building to include the construction of the stair towers. Um, exterior masonry walls have started to run up. Uh, interior uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough ends have begun. Upper level and roof deck installation has begun, and storm piping and site grading continue. Um, the next steps uh, as we move here uh, will complete the steel erection of the building. Um, installation of the roofing will begin. Uh, once the roof has been installed, the exterior insulation system and brick veneer will begin. Um, interior and exterior masonry activities will continue. Uh, we'll continue with the mechanical piping, duct work, and plumbing inside the building. Um, continue with electrical, fire alarm, low voltage, rough ends, and continue to work on the site. Um, some major uh, major milestones. Um, November of 2022, we anticipate being dried in in the area C. Um, December of 2022, we'll dry in area B. Um, April of 2023, the dry-in of area A, which includes your gym area, will be uh, roofing will be complete. Uh, we anticipate having permanent power to the building in June of 2023. Um, and then, as Henry spoke of earlier, the phases of the project, the uh, phase one uh, will be complete August of 2023. Uh, phase two, January of 24, uh, the demo of the building, which is phase three, April 24, and then final completion of the remaining site work and other adjacent activities, August of 24. Um, here are some photos of the construction progress. On the left there uh, is your steel erection uh, happening in the area C, uh, the kind of the BC area. Um, on the right is the concrete operation doing the pumping of the metal decks in area B. Uh, here are some photos of exterior masonry ongoing on the left, and then that is a stair tower and area C on the right. At this point in the meeting, we'll open it up for questions, um, and our panelists will provide answers. Um, and this portion of the meeting will be coordinated by Will Smith. So I'll turn it back over to Will at this moment.
Hey, Kim, can we back up one slide? There was a time lapse, I believe, uh, that should be able to click on to kind of show the progress. Yes. Of the Thank you for that. I will actually open up the time lapse now. And it's a, the image is a bit blurry, but what you see here is a great progression of construction uh, from the beginning to where we currently are now. All right, and, and with that, uh, thank you guys for, for the information and, and that you communicated. Uh, so once again, we're at the end of the presentation for tonight. Uh, this is a questioning and answering section. Uh, and so I know that there's a few questions in here. Uh, the first one that was asked originally, uh, which we answered uh, as part of this presentation is, uh, when will construction be done and classes be held in a new facility? And so we are projecting at this point for completion of phase two, which is the new construction of the facility uh, <coughs> in 2024. Uh, in terms of just when we hold uh, classes, that is, a, that is a conversation that we will be enter, uh, entertaining with uh, the stakeholders, principal, et cetera, in order to make that final determination. But we are anticipating uh, winter 2024 as well. Uh, open questions. Uh, how many students can fit in the cafeteria at once? Uh, Seth, uh, could you answer this question? Yeah, the cafeteria was designed to hold an entire grade level at once. So at the state rated capacity of 1,200 students, that's an assumed load of about 400 students uh, per period, per serving period. Let's put that in here. And the second question, uh, can I clarify the opening of school? Is it nine? So no, so this project is delivered in, in four phases. So we had phase one, which was some of the utility work with the temporary classrooms. Phase two is, if you're looking at this picture here, the new construction of the facility behind. Uh, phase three will then actually, once we move into the new facility, uh, we'll go back and actually demo the existing facility. And then phase four is when we'll actually go through uh, and finish up all the ball fields, play areas, things of that nature, and, and turn the facility, the completed project fully over. And so that is the date of September, uh, was it, 2024. Karen, I may need your help to type in that answer. <laughs> uh, is it possible to make up any lost ground with the delay in opening so we can move in before January? Uh, that is something that we will continue to explore. Uh, and, and, and determine what the costs, uh, you know, benefits are for that. And, and Principal Simile, you're definitely be involved in that, con that conversation. Um, anonymous uh, attendee, will there be a school counselor suite in the new school building, uh, Seth? So the administrative office is set up that uh, there is a counseling suite built into the administrative office. It is next to the nurse's suite. And it can be accessed both by the main entry. So somebody visiting the site, uh, if they have need to talk to a counselor, can access that suite without having to be taken through the rest of the school for security purposes. Same with the nursing suite. So uh, the next question, what continues to cause the date of completion to be pushed back? The date for completion prior to the January 2024 uh, date was August 2023. Uh, so I think this is, is multiple impacts, uh, first being just permit approval process. And so initially we were projecting that, you know, having that process completed, uh, you know, earlier than, than what, what was achieved. Uh, unfortunately, we kind of uh, hit some, some permitting challenges and some additional requirements that were being enforced by uh, our local jurisdiction for permitting. Uh, in which we had to go back to the drawing board, make some revisions to design, resubmit, uh, and then ultimately uh, get permit approval before we were able to start the project. And so in essence, that was the bulk of the delay that we incurred that actually had an impact uh, with pushing it from the, the August 2023 to the January 2024 date.
I noticed that these presentations are being recorded. Where specifically can I find all of their videos? I went to the site, however, I cannot find them. Also, when will this video be posted? Um, Karen, can you elaborate on that? Um, yes. Um, so at the conclusion of the meeting, um, we always have the PowerPoints um, translated in Spanish as well as French. Um, and then we will upload uh, those presentations as well as the recording uh, to the project page. So the William Work project page on the Capital Department of Capital Programs uh, site. Uh, we will be sure to provide everyone that participated on tonight's call, um, in addition to others, with the link of where you can find uh, the presentation information. All right, thank you for that clarification. Uh, that, that, at this point, that's all the questions. Uh, I'll give it a couple minutes and just see if there's anything else uh, that may come to mind. Okay, not seeing any additional questions. I guess this will be the conclusion uh, of tonight's meeting. I, I thank you all for your time. I thank you for your continued support of the project uh, and, and, and advocacy for, for the William Work community. Um, thank you all for just you know, joining us tonight and being participants. Thank you all for the panel members as well for your time tonight uh, and, and the information that you were able to provide. Uh, we would definitely follow up with the, the link for the tonight's presentation uh, and then also formally respond to these, uh, the four questions that we answered or the seven questions that we answered tonight, uh, but formally. Uh, and with that, uh, you guys have a blessed evening and blessed night and look forward to speaking to you guys at the next community meeting. Thank you.